Welcome to Quail's Knitting Nest. My name is Joy. I am coming to you from southeastern Pennsylvania, where this morning we had our very first dusting of snow for the year, for the winter. It was kind of exciting. Last winter, we did not even get any measurable snow the entire winter, which was very unusual. And now we have at least a measurable amount. <laughs> I'm by myself today because Janet's husband had a medical emergency this morning. So please keep her and her husband, Jim, in your prayers as he recovers and hopefully everything will be okay there. I'm going to start by telling you what I'm wearing, which is called the Bray Cardigan. It's a pattern by Josie Mercier. And I talk about this in detail in, in episode 25. However, since then I have made some modifications. <laughs> in there, I talked about how the sleeves were too long and I did fix the sleeves so that they are a better length for me. I did cut and work the ribbing down and then discovered that because the row gauge between the cable on the sleeve and the rest of the pattern was all kinds of wonky, I ended up putting a bunch of short rows on the inside of the sleeve to offset the length of the cable. Anyway, now it looks even on my wrist and before it was kind of dipping down, it was, it was really weird. So the ribbing is longer on the inside of the wrist than it is on the outside of the wrist, but it works out with the short rows. And then another thing that uh, was happening was this neck was too big. It was like really wide and gaping and I didn't like how it was fitting. So I, as you can see, the buttons are supposed to go straight up, but I took three of the buttons and moved them over. So the cardigan should go like this, but I took these three buttons and, or maybe it was just the two, I guess it was just the top two buttons and moved them over so that they kind of slant diagonally. It gives it sort of a uh, nautical feel, I think. And then it draws in the neck to make it not feel quite as gappy and loose up there. And I think it looks okay. So this is my Bray cardigan. Oh yes, and I used, I used Patton's Rustic Wool for this. Next, I'm gonna tell you about the elephant in the room which is right behind me. I finished my afghan. This is Nora's vintage afghan. It's huge. I started it September of 2022, and it's now December of 2023, so it took me over a year, but it is finished. I have all my squares put together. I have 20 squares, 10 brown squares, and 10 cream squares. And I ended up putting a brown border all around the edge. I did basically two rows of garter stitch. And I put the squares together using uh, Kitchener. I Kitchenered them together or grafted together all the squares. So the brown squares are going this way and the white squares are going this way, alternating throughout the blanket. I'll put some footage in at the end of the video so you can see the whole thing all at once. And I also have like how I finished it, how I put it together. I'm really happy with it. It's super warm. It goes from my nose to my toes, which was what I, I was wanting, and I'm loving it.
This is the mug I bought when I went to Ireland earlier this year, back in May. I love this, it's so cute. I have two more finished objects to show you. They're both short and sweet hats. The first one I talked about, I think in the last episode, they add Astro hat. This one here. And it is by Cindy Craft. I got the pattern and the yarn at Rhinebeck when Janet and I went in October. And I finished my hat. The yarn is from Subito Farm and it's called Foss. It is 100% Cormo. And this is their tag. I assume that's a picture of the farm. And they are located in Massachusetts. So this is my hat. Isn't it beautiful? I love it. It's not for me though. I'm going to give it to my daughter. Hopefully it fits her head. It is a little bit tight. I would not be comfortable wearing it. So we'll see. I did try to stretch it out as much as I could when I blocked it. super cool and look at the star on the very top very fun and I have one more hat to show you this one whoops this one is big that one was small this one's big so this is a basic tam pattern by Ann Budd from her handy book of patterns. And I used Painted Spring Farm Alpacas yarn. This is her DK, 80% alpaca, 20% wool. And she has, her skeins are a little bit non-standard. So it's 200 yards and it's 2.6 ounces, which is 74 grams. And this is one of her assigned pooling colorways. So it's gray yarn with purple pool spots. And what I did was I used another pattern called Pooling is a Cinch by Michelle Burst. Burstein or Bernstein. Anyway, I used her pattern for these little stitchy things. So every time you come to a purple spot in the pattern, you do one of these things, which is basically a three over three cross. It's not a cable, but it's literally pulling the three stitches over the other three stitches and it gives you that cross. Very similar to a cable, but tighter. I really like how it turned out. So it's nice and spacious. If you have hair that you don't want to like be smushed in a hat, or if you have like big hair, it'd be perfect. Nice tam. And it's really soft with the alpaca. I've been wanting to try out some of these assigned pulling things, but I'm not a big shawl person, so I didn't want to try one of the big shawls like Janet's working on. So I made a hat. I have a couple whips to show you. It's not in this bag. Actually, the hats were in this bag. However, my first whip is an Arna and Carlos in this bag. They announced that they are doing an Advent, Advent Mystery Knit Along. And I don't usually do Mystery Knit Alongs and I don't usually do Advent Knit Alongs. But this one tickled my bunny bone and I am super excited about it. 
they are doing a mystery Christmas stocking. It starts on December 1st. Now I'm recording this before the first, the first, but you'll be seeing it after the first. Anyway, it starts December 1st and goes 24 days up until Christmas and it's free during the month of December up until the 25th, I think. And then after that, it becomes a paid pattern. So if you participate in the knit along, or at least if you download the clues every day, you'll have it for free. So it's a Christmas stocking and they already gave the cast on part, which is the toe. It's a toe up Christmas stocking. Uh, it's hard to see, I guess, against my sweater because I'm using a, a dark green color. So we start with the toe and then the clues are given in six row sections all the way up the stocking. Six rows per day. I think that's pretty doable. Six rows per day. And then by Christmas Eve, we'll have a finished stocking, which we can stock for Christmas morning. That's fun, huh? <laughs> so I'm using the leftover yarn from my festive sweater that I made last year. This is Bisha Bouche Le Lambs Wool. So I have dark green and I have this cream color. And then my third color is um, the Bisha Bouche doesn't come in a red. So I have this Aaron Moore which I used these colors for my, whoop. as I said, I used these colors for my uh, festive sweater last year. So I think they'll make a great Christmas stocking. I'm so looking forward to this, it'll be a lot of fun. And then my second whip is I started a sweater for my husband. He wanted a Tweety yarn that was low maintenance, something he didn't have to hand wash. So I searched online and I ended up finding this Barocca Remix. And I showed him the colors that there were and he chose this one, which is 3993. <laughs> it's basically like a dark charcoal and it has little white flecks in it. He wanted one with all different colored flecks Remix didn't have one with all different colors and they're actually kind of hard to find, I discovered, especially in something that's washable. So this is what we settled on. And then I pull, went through my Ravelry and pulled up eight patterns, I think, and he, I had him come over and look at them. I said, which one do you like? So this is the one that he picked out. It is called the DNA per Pullover. It is by Andrea Cull, and it is from Inner Weave Knits, winter 2019. So this is the pullover. It's gorgeous. I'm having so much fun knitting this. And here's the backside. So that's what he chose. And I am almost finished the back. All I have to do are the shaping for the shoulders and then I can start the front. This is so much fun and I think it's beautiful. I can't wait to, to give it to him. So the nice thing is that if I don't finish it for Christmas, his birthday's in January. So it'll either be a Christmas present or a birthday present. <laughs> we shall see. So I'm going to be doing this plus the Advent stocking in December. One thing I've been meaning to show you and I keep forgetting is some of the yarn that I bought when I was at Knitter's Day Out back in September. One of the things I got was this. So this is from the Fiberarium, it's called Terrace Fingering Weight, 100% wool, 
non-superwash. This is non-standard put up also. It's 250 yards, which turns out to be 56 grams. And then she dyes them in small batches. And I decided to get the pink multi and then the solid blue. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it, but I, I really like the yarn. I think it feels nice. It would be fun to work with. I forget where she's from. Fiberarium. But I think she's from Pennsylvania somewhere. And then I got more yarn from Painted Spring Alpaca Farm. Painted Spring Farm Alpacas. She had a new, a new yarn that she had spun up and then dyed. And I just fell in love with these colors. I don't know what I'm going to do with this either, but I just adore the way these three colors come together. This is, so this is three ounces, 85 grams, 150 yards, 65% alpaca, 20% wool, and 15% sari silk. Well, I don't know if you can see, but this is a tweed. And the tweed flecks are the sari silk. So like, here's a yellow, here's a blue, here's a, a red. So on top of the gorgeous colors, there's also these little flecks. Really hard to see on camera, but they are there and that's what the sari silk is the, the little flecks that are in in the yarn and of course it's alpaca so it's really soft now i have to figure out what to do with it i do want to give a shout out to a podcast that i started watching earlier this year which i just adore and it is my wonderful knitting life and Margaret, who is the host of it, lives in Quebec currently. She is a little ball of fun. She's an awesome knitter. She does stunning color work. Usually is her main thing is color work. Her sweaters are beautiful. I really enjoy seeing what she's working on and what she's thinking about doing and her past gorgeous sweaters that she's made. Oh my. And she's so sweet and always upbeat, even when things are not going so great. So I highly recommend you take a look at her, My Wonderful Knitting Life. And she just had an upload um, a week or two ago. And one other thing I want to mention is the new Interweave Knits came out. So this is winter 2024. Has a nice flower hat on the front and I'll just show you a couple of things in here that I like this one is called the timbered pullover by Denise Hebner very pretty you can see I'm sort of in a, a cable mood here lately and then from the cover there's a hat and mitten set called meadow sweet hat by Lana Joyce or Joyce, I don't know, but there's the mitten. And you can kind of see the hat and the pattern, but there's the mitten. Very pretty. These flowers are kind of having a have having a day. I see a lot of patterns on Ravelry sweaters and hats and mittens with a similar flower vibe. Here's another hat called the Gambrel Hat by Amy Gunderson, which I really like. Some nice texture in there. And yet another hat with nice texture is called the Hearth Hat by Sandy Rosner. Really pretty. So maybe I'll make another hat. Those are my highlights from the magazine. And I'm really happy because it, it seems like it often happens that I'll go searching for a pattern and end up with something from an old issue. 
So I have them all on my shelf in my room and they're there as a uh, resource, which is great. I love it. My question for you today is, do you do anything special for the holidays? Do you usually do an Advent knit-along or a mystery knit-along or a Kwanzaa knit-along or a Hanukkah knit-along? <laughs> I know I, I was watching the Black Knitter and she was, I think it was a year ago, she got a Kwanzaa box and I think I forget. I'm, I'm not remembering this very well, but in, in, so instead of 24 little Advent things, it had things for every day of Kwanzaa. And I have no idea if Jewish people do the same thing for Hanukkah or not, but I think it's a neat idea, even though I don't no normally participate. So let me know, are you doing anything special knitting related for the holidays this year? So I'm hoping to be back in maybe two weeks or so, so I can have Janet back on the podcast and to give you an update on my stocking. Hopefully that will work out. If not, I might not just see you till after Christmas. Happy holidays. Enjoy your knitting. Bye-bye.